Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a special series that includes several important topics related to ComSol Multiphysics simulations. We have already covered a playlist on geometry which will, which will be important to you. In this particular playlist, we will be talking about different topics but those topics will be relevant to your simulations and that's why I request you to watch the entire playlist. Also watch the other playlists which I have created, those will be useful. The today's topic of discussion is functions, how you can use functions in ComSol geometry. Usage of functions are very important because in your simulation you may need to use your own function to see some effect and uh, you, you should know uh, how to put that, how to integrate that particular function with ComSol physics. And that is the topic of today's discussion. This will be very much relevant to your simulations and that's why I request you to do the entire to, to see the entire video without skipping it. So I go to 2D geometry for the purpose of learning. Then I take a physics that is laminar physics. I click on add so it will be added. Then go to study select time dependent one and you can double click on it so it will come to the interface directly now you have to go to definition if you right click on it you will see an option functions and there are several other options inside that and those are analytic interpolation i'll be talking about interpolation in a different video because it needs special care and some important mathematical functions which you might have heard about are given here like Gaussian pulse, RAM functions, rectangle, step functions, triangle wave and different waveforms. Also you have random functions. One important thing is image. So what is image? I will be talking about it in a separate video because image also we are some data and nowadays image analysis have become very important topic and uh, people uh, encode some data in a particular in a particular image and later on that image is exported uh, the image is imported in some other software to generate those data so all those topics we'll be talking about in separate videos but today let us talk about say one of the functions available initially i go to gaussian pulse just click on the plot once you take it so you will be getting say this is the Gaussian functions and in every functions there are some I mean parameters which you are allowed to change in order to reshape the graph. Suppose here the maxima is placed at zero. So this is the location that that is defined by the location. So if you change the location say I make it one. So the maxima will be shifting to here at one. Let us see it. Yes it has shifted. You can see now it is one. And what is the standard deviation? Standard deviation is a parameter that defines the Gaussian distribution. If you pause the video and go back to Gaussian functions, just search it on internet, you will understand what is the standard deviation in regard to this Gaussian function. But for this particular topic of discussion, it is important to change this, that parameters. Say I make it 0.5, click on it. So this is changed, you can see from these values, again I am showing, if I change it, I mean by some higher value, you can visualize better, just look at here, you can see, yeah, it has changed. So if you are changing it, something is happening with this particular plot and that is very important. So again, if you see, if I make it 5, it is changing not only the y-axis the x-axis is also changing that means it is either becoming wider or it is becoming sharper it depends on the standard deviation if higher the standard deviation wider would be the curve you can see if I make it 10 so the values will decrease because it is becoming wider see this has become 0 to 0.04 and this is also the span is also increasing so it's a wider distribution if you make it very small, say 0.1, it will be very sharp. So this height will be changing to a large and this x-axis will be squished to smaller values. Let us see it. Yes, it is happening. So we will not be talking about the functions more. 
because this is a topic of mathematics uh, we can talk about this in later videos but for the time being uh, let me show you other options say waveform if you take so you have an option angular frequencies amplitude phase all all things are uh, very relevant to sine functions if you plot it you can see you have these options you can change the angular frequency you can change the amplitude let let me look at the amplitude it is now one if i change it to 0.5 say it will become 0.5 yeah you have to plot it yeah it has become 0.5 if you change the phase the peak position will be shifted let me show you if i make it 0.5 and plot it you have seen like it has shifted somewhat so you can play around with it now one thing i just want to tell you in this particular case you don't have any control over this range for say yeah, now it is 0 to 12 so automatically it is taking uh, but what if I want to have a control over it so we have more precise options for that and the other thing is this is a function so it should have some dependent variable and independent variable and also there should be some units of those dependent and independent variables but here we don't see any units in the y-axis as well as in the x-axis but when you will be using in your uh, physics then you need some units so how to bridge between these two so from the unit less to unit that i'll be talking about shortly but before that let me show you analytic function and i prefer to use this function very much you can see analytic it is written fx that means you can define your fx suppose i want to define a cos function so i define cos cos of say y say x x is the independent variable here we call it argument and the cos x is the expression or it is the fx it could be exponential as well it could be anything you have any mathematical function just put it here and you will be having the plot and an another flexibility is you can choose your range of this x from uh, here it is from span of this x here it is from 0 to 1 so let me plot it so it is this now the thing is you have to make it an appropriate function like 2 into pi into say f say this is 5 so you will be getting 5 peaks yes it has come now you have 5 I mean not 5 peaks 5 different wavelengths so frequency means frequency 5 means you will have 5 waves adjacent okay now you can change the frequency to 50 so it will be very close closely spaced because here your 0 to 1 is not changing you are changing the frequency so the waves are coming closer and closer if you make it very less so it will go far apart say if you make it 2 it will become like this so let us stick to 5 yes it is 5 <clears throat> you can also change the span of x say i want from 0 to 0.5 so yeah you can see from 0 to 0.5 but let me put it 1 itself because i will be talking about 0 to 1 now let me show you how to use those functions in this laminar flow physics for that let me choose the geometry before going to that let me put millimeter low dimension channels right click you know uh, clicking on it taking a rectangle say the height of the rectangle will be one itself width you can take five it will give you a good aspect ratio to look at yeah this is the thing i should use some materials so i go to recent materials i choose water so water is here now what i do is i create one inlet of this channel say this is the inlet as i choose an inlet i should choose an outlet as well so i click on outlet and i make this one outlet at outlet i am maintaining zero static pressure at inlet what i want to do is i want to use one of these functions and for that 
suppose I want to use this analytic function because as I have mentioned I have control over it I have 0 to 1 and I want to have this analytic function from this 0 to 1 in the vertical axis so the thing uh, which I want to convey to you is if you have say 0 to 5 you can choose your span from 0 to 5 so it gives you a better visualization I want to put a sinusoidal input velocity here for that I use this analytical function a n1 say I use how to use it maximum say maximum amplitude 0.1 then the sine function will come but the name of the function is a n1 so we should write a n1 after that you have to give a bracket and within this bracket you have to write the argument so it will be function of what in the vertical direction so it will be function of y so I put y and see you have some error it is being shown in yellow and yellow color comes due to unit error why where from this unit error is coming because you have put one y it has come with its associated unit which is meter now to get rid of that uh, you have to do within a third bracket you have to write 1 by m so what you are basically doing you are multiplying meter by 1 by meter so it is cancelling out and giving you an unitless quantity because it is it is it is hoping for an unitless number because the unit is already chosen here at meter uh, I mean by meter per second so your wave function is defined so what I expect, I expect that my inlet velocity will have alternating positive and negative values because I have chosen this function from 0 to 1 and your inlet is also 0 to 1 but there is a tweak. This 0 to 1, I mean uh, I should get this alternating velocities but let's see whether we get or not. For that, I click on mesh, do the meshing and then uh, I try to simulate it. Let me simulate it uh, for up to point once again. I click on compute. So, it, it has started computing. It will take some time. But the thing is, we should expect and sinusoidal alternating initial velocities. Let us see whether we get or not. If we don't get, we should explain why we are not getting so you can see we are not getting a sinusoidal input although we have used a particular wave function here so what might be the reason so let us think about it because see this unit is millimeter and this unit is meter so we have to convert it so in millimeter if you want to convert 1 meter is equal to 0 0.001 millimeter so the span should be 0 0.001 if it is like this you should divide it by 0 0.001 then only you will have 5 such waveforms within this now your cosine function is defined in appropriate span initially it was one but we were doing an unit mistake and that's why uh, the velocity profile has come like this this is not sinusoidal at the inlet now what we do is it is already defined so if you again simulate it now it should come because we have defined appropriate range let's see the simulation is running it will take a few seconds and we expect this time the sinusoidal nature will come yes it has come let me zoom here yes you can see there are alternating positive and negative values so those are the negative and those are the positives actually the negative means I mean you will be no you will not be get, getting its inlet so you will be getting kind of zero velocities here so, but you, you, you are getting what, you, what it is expected, but this is not a fluid mechanics problem. That's why for the understanding purpose only I have taken this example. But uh, let us take a uh, more realistic function, say a ramp function. And this 
let us take the ram function under an1 itself because it is better to use again but you should okay let's proceed with the ram1 only so i plot it here so now it is from 0 to 1 so what i need to do is when i yes when i use it i should convert this one to millimeter so i will be doing this how i will do let's try uh, the name of function is rm1 so it is now in meter so if i multiply here by 0 0.001 then it will be taking in millimeter so it should take a ram function from 0 to 1 so let's see let us again simulate it so ramp mean here low velocity at the top we should have higher velocity and we try to maintain the unit consistency as well yes it has come you can see at the bottom you have lower velocity and gradually the velocity is increasing this is the nature of the ram function uh, we can also plot the velocity profile here to see whether it is coming after the ram kind or not for that we go to data set we right click and choose a cut line let us take a cut line somewhere here say x equal to 0 0.01 again x equal to 0 0.01 and y spanning from 0 to 1 so we have taken it's very close let us take it at 0.1 instead of 0 0.01 so that you can at least see where the line is yeah the line is here now now we have to plot the velocity for that we take a plot group in the plot group you should take the data set from cut line 2d let us plot the last time step now i right click on cut line 2d not cut line 2d let me go to yeah 1d plot group I right click on it, I take line graph and I plot the x directional velocity u. Yeah, you can see it's moving like ramp. So we have taken a function ramp here and we have implemented it in fluid flow. So this is the beauty of using functions in COMSOL maybe this particular video is not sufficient to understand all the aspects of functions and that is why i will be making two more videos on functions one will be focusing on few more ideas and the second will be focusing focusing on how to use numerical values as a function so functions mean you can have an analytical expressions or you can have a data suppose you have you are doing some experiment and you have a data independent variable versus dependent variable data and that data you are trying to utilize in your simulation and in that case how to do that so for knowing this follow me i'll be uploading these videos very soon till then till then i just stay tuned with us and i request you to subscribe to our channel because we are also uploading videos on uh, mathematics uh, currently we are doing a vector algebra series which will be important to you also so today i stop here thank you very much